So have you heard that scripture before, John 3, 16? Let's say that together, because you know that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to talk about Nicodemus coming in the middle of the night for just a moment before we come and partake of communion this day. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we ask that you remind us of your grace, remind us of your love for the world, remind us how you give us a heart to love one another and to love you. And now, Lord, may the words of all of our mouths and even the meditations of each one of our hearts, may they truly be acceptable in your sight. For you and you alone, Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. How many of you have ever made this comment in your life? I just don't understand. You know, things happen around us all the time. And doesn't it make you want to scratch your head sometimes and go, you know, I, I just don't understand. This past week, one of my former roommates in college at Brevard and Pfeiffer College, and this fella is now a United Methodist minister, imagine that, and um, he, he called me. And he said, Paul, my mom's going to have, uh, she's got an aneurysm, and she's going to have surgery up at St. Joe's on Wednesday morning early. I just wanted you to know so you could pray for her. And, and, and I told him, I said, now, Dennis, I'd be happy to be there. And he said, no, no, Highlands is so far away from Asheville. <laughs> he doesn't realize I travel to Asheville just about every day at St. Joe's. And, and, and so Wednesday came. And, and I got over there early at St. Joe's, and there I met Dennis and his family, and we sat together while his mom had surgery. She did very, very well through the surgery, and the surgeon came out and talked to the family and, and, and said he was very ecstatic and happy with his work. His mom would be in ICU for a few days, and then they would move her into a regular room. And so I left on Wednesday thinking everything's good. I got a text from Dennis yesterday morning. And he said, Paul, my mom has taken a turn for the worse. Just pray. And so I decided to go back over after I ran yesterday morning. I went back over to Asheville. And, and, and when I got there, Dennis kind of told me the story. Now, he's a United Methodist minister. And he said, you know, Paul, I'm with people like this all the time. But the doctors have come out and they said, she may need to go on a ventilator. And, and, and I know my mom has a living will, but the doctors are saying, you know, hey, she's going to be okay. We'll get her off. But I want to respect my mother's wishes. And so we went out to eat lunch to just kind of talk. He said, you know, I talk with people on a daily basis about decisions that they need to make. I don't understand why it's so hard for me now. I said, Dennis, it's your mom. <laughs> I just don't understand why it's hard. In the middle of the night, Nicodemus comes to find Jesus. Now, I understand why Nicodemus came in the middle of the night because he didn't want anybody to see him talking to Jesus. And so he comes to Jesus, and I love how he pumps Jesus up. He says, you know, Jesus, you truly are of God, because nobody could do the things that you do unless they were sent from God. I know you're from God. And instead of Jesus going, well, thank you, did you hear what Jesus said? Well, Nicodemus, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born from above. You must be born again. And Nicodemus goes, excuse me? And Jesus says, well, it, it's like the, the, the Spirit of God. It needs to come into you and, and to revive you and to refresh you. And then you can enter the kingdom. And then Nicodemus says those words. 
I just don't understand. You see, it's tough sometimes to understand. But this morning, before we take communion, I, I, I don't want to talk about these things I don't understand anymore. I want to talk to you about some things I do understand. You see, I don't understand everything about communion, but this I do understand about it. When we eat and drink in faith, God's grace is given to us. I understand that. that that's why I love that, that we say the communion table is open to literally everybody. Because who are we to say you don't deserve God's grace? No, we, we don't do that. We say the communion table is open to all. Christ invites us to that communion table. Christ gives us his grace. I understand that. I also understand that with this being Commitment Sunday, that everything that we are about is to offer Jesus Christ in this community. I'm a big advocate of God's timing. And I told our leadership several weeks ago when we had a, a, worship, uh, a worship service with just the leadership in the church, I told them, I said, I, I love God's timing. This property became available at the right time. And how many of you ever thought we would get the alley behind the church rerouted? Everybody said, you're crazy. That will never happen. Guess what? It happened. It's about God's time. I also understand that God can take our little and he can make it. I understand my commitment alone doesn't mean a lot, but when our commitments come together, God uses them for his glory and his kingdom. I understand that. And I also understand why Nicodemus really didn't seem to understand what Jesus was saying because that was a new language for him. But I want you to hear this. The most important thing Jesus said to Nicodemus was that John 3, 16, 17 in my opinion. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everybody who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, I understand there are a lot of people who don't come to church because they think the church condemns everybody Read verse 17. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn, but that the world might be saved through him. I understand that's the message we need to be saying. How many of you have ever watched a football game? You seen on TV? You know, they got that stuff under there. Have, have you noticed things, people sitting around you? Has anybody <coughs> noticed any? little eye patch thing. You see, I think instead of letting football take all the glory for that, you know what we need to do? That's what we need to do. We need to tell this community that God loves them. We need to share that with this community. Let's say that again together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. We don't need a football team to tell us that. That's what the church needs to do. Let's pray together. Gracious God, as we prepare to come to your table this day, Help us to be mindful of the call that you placed on our lives to share Christ with everyone. Help us to understand we do that by the way we treat each other, by the way we open the doors to one another. Help us to understand that you love the world and help us to understand that you love us. For we offer this prayer in
we remember the story all so well when Jesus and his disciples they had shared the Passover meal with one another and after they'd eaten the meal Jesus did something that he typically didn't do he, he looked at all those disciples and, and he took some bread and he broke that bread and he passed it around to those disciples and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me. And then after Jesus had passed out the bread, he took the common cup and, and, and he passed that around to all those disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood which is shed for you and for all the world for the forgiveness of sin. The cup of the new covenant. And Jesus said, do this very often. Let us pray together. Gracious God, in remembering your love for this world, we would ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body of Christ that we may be redeemed by his new covenant. Make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. For we offer this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.